Hello, I'm Tasnia Rahman. Currently, I'm a second year medical student at McGill University. I joined Dr. Edward Ruthazer's lab in the Montreal Neurological Institute as an undergraduate before completing an MSc under his supervision in 2019. Today, I will be discussing our recent publication in PNAS, Stentian Structural Plasticity in the Developing Visual System. Our major driving interest was to describe and uncover activity-dependent rules that govern the high degree of precision required in wiring up individual neurons with their appropriate synaptic partners. One of the most well-studied and influential rules in that regard have been dictated by Donald Hebb and is popularly stated as cells that fire together wire together. Almost 30 years later, this idea was elaborated upon by Gunther Stent, who proposed that in addition to the Hebbian mechanism, there should also be a kind of reverse rule for those neurons that fire out of synchrony with their neighbors, such that they will lose their link instead. While there is only one way in which cells can be synchronized when firing together, there are many ways in which they can be out of sync. We asked, what are the distinct consequences on axon growth when a cell either repeatedly fires independently from its surrounding inputs, or when it remains silent while its neighbors are concurrently firing instead. The visual system of albino Xenopus slavis tadpoles provides a useful model in which to monitor the influence of sensory experience on circuit development. These translucent organisms lend themselves to live imaging techniques, which can be employed to um, observe dynamic morphological changes of individual cells. Xenopus lavis retinal ganglion cells found in the eye normally project all their axons to the opposite side of the optic tectum, which is a main visual center of the tadpole brain. However, we took advantage of the fact that in 39% of animals, between one and three RGC axons are misguided to the same side. And while mistargeted, these IPSI axons successfully integrate into the circuitry and reside in an environment in which its pattern of activation is normally out of sync with that of its neighboring inputs, which originate from the opposite eye. Importantly, this model allowed us to visually stimulate either a large number of neighboring axons by stimulating the contralateral eye, or an axon on its own by presenting visual stimuli to the IPSI eye. Using two-photon microscopy, we were then able to determine the contribution of these distinct visual stimulation protocols to dynamic changes in axon arborization and growth. We measured a number of different parameters, including branch tip growth and retraction, in both the control period of darkness and under the respective visual stimulation paradigms. To our surprise, we found that when the non-conforming neuron remained silent while its neighbors were synchronously firing, it would lead to greater branch initiation. This was not the case when the sole axon fired by itself, indicating that a signal must be generated by the quiescent cell's active neighbors that tell the renegade axon to increase its rate of elaboration. This instruction may facilitate the sorting of an initially disordered set of inputs into more organized neural representations by promoting the distancing of axons whose activity patterns don't match. Our findings are especially important as they provide direct evidence for an intracellular stentine signal that promotes an axon's elaboration when neighboring inputs repeatedly and persistently fire without its contribution, thus opening the door to better understand the many intricacies that we know must exist for neural circuit development. With that, I would like to acknowledge the Ruth Acer Lab and our funding sources, as well as invite you to take a closer look at our findings. Thank you.